Hello! In my last video I showed 3D printed ball bearings that I use in my rover. There are many of them hiding inside. Two bearings in each wheel, two more for each steering wheel, two in this joint, two in this attachment, and eight more in differential mechanism inside. 36 bearings total. They are not as good as factory made metal bearings, but I'm still very happy with the result. In this video I will show how to design and print them. A ball bearing is a mechanism that constrains the relative motion of two parts and allows only rotation around one axis. It also reduces friction. Look at this bearing for example. Let's imagine for a simplicity that the outer part is fixed and doesn't move at all. Then the bearing constrains movements of the inner part. And when we try to force an allowed movement, that creates a load to the bearing. There are three types of load. When force is applied parallel to the axis, it's called axial load. If force is applied perpendicular to the axis, then it's radial load. And if we are trying to tilt the axis, it creates a moment load. So, the purpose of a bearing is to withstand these three types of load and reduce friction of the allowed rotation. Let's take a look at the most common type of bearings, a deep groove ball bearing. This type of ball bearing has grooves on the inner and the outer parts, and the space in between is filled with rolling elements. These grooves are called traces. When the bearing rotates, friction is greatly reduced because instead of sliding, we have rolling. Any load applied to the bearing creates a force between rolling balls and races. For each ball, this force always goes through the center and points of contact. For example, these forces are created by radial load. If the axial load is applied, forces look like this. These forces could not be aligned parallel to the load, because there is no suitable point of contact for this direction. This misalignment leads to increased force and reduces the axial load capabilities of this type of bearing. Moment load in this bearing is similar to axial load, but the force has different directions on two sides of the bearing. As we can see, this type of bearing can handle any type of load in any direction, but it's best suited for situations where radial load is the dominant one. This type of bearing is quite hard to 3D print for several reasons. At least that's what I thought when I started experimenting with printed bearings. For now, let's just accept the fact that we cannot make a bearing that can handle all types of load and solve problems one at a time. Let's design the bearing for the radial load first. I will use on shape here, but any other parametric cut will work too. Start with a sketch and draw an axis of our future bearing. Mine will be vertical here. We are going to draw a section of races and revolve it around the axis. Now draw a circle that represents a ball. I'm using 4mm balls, so usually I go for 4.1mm circle. It's a very convenient way to add a small gap. Now draw two lines and put vertical constraints on them. That will be our main races. Put tangent constraints with a circle. Here we can define the radius of our inner race and the vertical position of the circle. Nice! But now the rolling element can move up and down, and we need to prevent this, so add a pair of auxiliary races at 45 degrees angle. Don't forget tangent to the circle constraints. Now we need to add some thickness to the walls of our races. In my designs, races are merged with other parts, 
so the bearing is integrated directly where it is needed. Here I will just make it this way. The main races will work with radial load, while the auxiliary races will keep the bearing in one piece and handle some axial load. But this bearing can hold axial load only in one direction. The load in opposite direction will pull it apart. So, to finish the bearing, we need to mirror the whole thing. I will create bodies first by revolving the sketch. Now I can mirror the outer part with merge mode and mirror the inner part as a new body. It also greatly increases the moment load capabilities. So, in the end we have three parts. The outer part and two pieces of the inner part. The last part is a cage that keeps spheres evenly spaced. You can use the bearing without the cage, but then you need to fill the gap completely, so it will be quite heavy and very noisy. Also, a properly designed cage just makes the assembly process 10 times easier. Let's get back to the sketch. I left the gap here on purpose. I will draw here a rectangular feature that ends with an arc which shares the central point with the circle. I use 0.3mm gaps on each side and the length of the bottom part is 2mm. Revolve this profile and we have the cage. To make holes in the cage, we return to the sketch again and draw another circle. For 4mm spheres, 4.5mm circle is ideal. We also need to draw any diameter for this circle. For example, vertical. Now select half of the circle and revolve it around the diameter. Use remove mode for revolving and remove the material from the cage. Now we have one hole. To make many, we need to create a circular array around the axis. Select the mod that replicates features and choose the number of holes. I wouldn't probably go below 8. I usually use 12 or 16. I will just use 12 here. The cage is done and there is no need to design the second cage because it's the same part, we just need to print it two times. I will just add these features for screws. 3mm hole for M3 screw on one part and 4mm hole for brass heat set insert in the other part. This is how I make bearings for radial load. Now let's make a bearing for the axial load, the so-called thrust bearing. The design is very similar, but in this case, races should be oriented perpendicular to the axis. This will minimize the created force, because it will be parallel to the load. The cage shape is slightly different in this case. Of course, this bearing can handle the load only in one direction, but in most cases, we don't need a bearing that can handle the high axial load in both directions. So, instead of mirroring this thrust bearing, we can make another one as radial load bearing. That will make the axis more stable and is good enough. I made this thrust bearing with 36 rolling elements. It's time to slice and print these bearings now. It's not difficult at all. The main thing is that the contact surface with the spheres roll should be as good as possible so the bearing axis should always be vertical on the build plate. To print bearings I use PETG filament. I use 0.4mm nozzle, 0.2mm layers, 3 perimeters and 30% rectilinear infill. Two perimeters work for bearing too, but brass inserts do not hold well enough with only two perimeters. And I use two additional options to improve surface quality. The first is random seams position, 
as we don't want to have all seams lined up on our races. And I also like the feature that prevents unnecessary perimeters crossing when the extruder just travels from one place to another. Every time extruder crosses the perimeter, there is a chance that a small blob of material will be deposited in this place. With this option enabled, the extruder will travel over the printed material when it's possible. Everything else is just a default. I think it's a very straightforward print overall. So let's print the radial bearing and place brass inserts. I really enjoy how brass inserts looks with white plastic. Press like if you think that it looks nice too. Assembly is very easy. First, fill the cage. I am using stainless steel balls, but I think the plastic could be used too if you want to make the bearing lighter. The 4.5mm hole diameter works really well. They are kinda loose when clicked in place, but at the same time they will not fall out. And now we simply stack everything and fix with bolts. There is just a little bit of play, and the bearing rotates freely, even with a noticeable load. Thrust bearing is no different. Want to see how easily it rotates? Check this out. Let's test the maximum load. My weight is about 72 kilos and this thrust bearing with 36 balls can easily hold me. The bearing is completely fine after that. Only the surface of the races was smoothed out a little. And it was 2 kilos per ball. I repeated this test several times, decreasing the number of rolling elements. And finally, while testing with 8 kilos per ball, I felt much more friction than usual. That's probably because the bearing was squished enough to make the cage interfere with races. But even after that, there is no visible damage. So, I would say that 4 kilos per ball is a reasonable maximum load for the axial bearing. The radial bearing is much more tricky. I will test it in another video. That's all for now. Check out the description if you need design files. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more engineering. See you next time.